Hey there, fellows. Today I suggest we try experimenting with this right here. Well, not exactly with this, but with the thing that produced them, which is a 3D printer. Someone had a really interesting suggestion. We were pondering, um, what else we could try aside from this? And quickly came up with something. Now these... We've tried making them out of various different materials. These are pads for this type of car. And now the idea is to try using different plastics to make brake pads. And of course testing them. Now we have a buddy who runs a YouTube channel called Sib Maker. Go ahead and check him out. He makes videos of the entire process of how he prints parts, does all of the measurements and what have you. And so I think we should take these pads to him for scanning. You'll print them out of various plastics and give them to us for testing. Okay, let's do this. We 3D print brake pads for a lot of them. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Okay, guys, check this out. We've got us a terrific set of pads. Sergey printed these for us, and just look at them. We got a few different variants that we can try out today, and I suggest we start with the simplest ones. This is Pet G. Just your regular sort of plastic used to make uh, drink bottles and such. In a previous video, you might have seen us try making cam gears out of it. And it didn't do all that well, to be honest. But in any case, that was a thing. Right, what else do we got? We also have a material known as Ultran. As a matter of fact, this particular material proved to be the best one for the cam gears. This is carbon reinforced nylon, and that's about everything I know about it, really. But I do remember it being very light, also quite durable, and now we're going to test it as a brake system component. And here we have yet another set of pads. They're made of a different material and say friction on them. What would that be? Well, it's more or less the same basis, as in this is also nylon. Just that this is glass filled. It's also quite durable. It's also quite tough. But if these are carbon reinforced, here you have glass instead. And today we're gonna try all of them out and see which is best. We've placed a few cones out on the track, and I'm gonna be accelerating to 80 kilometers an hour, and uh, braking hard from that speed. Then we fit a new set of pads, accelerate once more, brake once again, and when it's all said and done, we choose a winner. Pick the material that did the best job. Okay, let's get out there. Stopping distance on stock pads. That's 80. Yeah, one of the wheels did lock up ever so slightly. But no big deal. I let off just a tiny bit and we're good. And here's the stopping distance when you're running stock pads. Did you place the cone? We've done this before. So we know the figure. No need to even measure it. It's around 40 meters. And we begin. Which should we use first? The camera guy says we should start with Pet G. Pet G it is then. Okay, so they are in place, and now... I'm gonna get the car up to speed. And from there, we'll uh, see where this whole thing goes. <laughs> okay, let's head out. Time to continue this experiment of ours. Let's do this. Stopping distance on pet G pads. There we go. Try from low speed. They work. Let's head to the starting line then. 60, 70, 80. Potato time! The brakes literally don't work. The brakes just didn't work, plain and simple. 
I mean, at the very beginning, the brakes did work for, like, a split second. But after that, it was pedal on the floor. I let off and I was pushing it over and over again. Where do we put the cone? Place it on the tree. That won't do. They've smeared the rotor. Is it bad? Not really. Yeah, it really isn't bad at all, look at that. Yeah, well, the plastic was burning. That's all black. So they were heating the rotor. Okay, here's the situation with the pet gene. It's actually pretty interesting. It got pretty hot, to the point of it melting. And the brakes, they worked for just a split second in the beginning. It might have even been less. It felt like the brakes would give me at least something, but then... They sent me hunting for potatoes. The car went sailing into the trees. So this plastic was totally ineffective. You would have seen some material on the rotors. A couple of snot trails, so to speak. I time to dig out some potatoes. Stopping distance has obviously increased. And if it was 40 meters to that cone, then this is at least another 40 meters. We can't really use our measuring tool on the grass. And it seems as if the bushes and windstone plants and what have you have done a better job stopping the car than these. Yeah, these pads are pretty terrible. Okay, well, let's try the next material. Carbon-reinforced nylon or Ultran. Stopping distance on Ultran pads. And they're in there, the pads are in place. Well done, Sergey. Will you bring potatoes? I will if you need some. Pump the pedal a few times for them to start working. Going a bit faster. There we go. From low speed. Well, the car does break. Here we go. It does break from a lower speed. But now I'll go faster and see how it does from a higher speed. That's 80. Take a look at that. Holy cow, dude. Take a look at that. Didn't even leave the pavement. What did you hide for? Scared? Hiding from the wind. Oh, right, I see. Not as windy, uh-huh. So here's what's up. Wait, where's the... Oh, there it is. What? It's right behind the car. And how much would that be? Like 10 meters? Yeah, so these carbon-reinforced pads have done very well indeed. They pretty much did what they were supposed to. I mean, yeah, they weren't necessarily ideal or super effective, but they did... Uh, I should also mention that the material works in such a way... Uh, that when I press down on the pedal, it didn't sink into the floor. Before, the pedal did exactly that, even though I gave it a few pumps prior and the car would even stop at lower speeds. But then I pressed it and I could feel it sinking further and further. However, in this case, I felt proper resistance, it was all good. And the car stopped, albeit 10 meters further down the road compared to stock pads. Not bad for a plastic, I'd say. But let's uh, remove them and see what sort of condition they're in. Okay, let me tell you what happened to these brake pads. 
As we can plainly see by looking at them, unlike the pet G, not the entire surface area was coming into contact. Apparently that melted right away, and even though we had full contact, it was just smearing the rotors. As for this material, the carbon-reinforced nylon, it doesn't seem like it was even burning. Because if it were to quickly start burning, then we would have had full contact. Which we did not. But hey, in any case, even with how much actual limited contact we had, the car was able to stop and that is a very good thing. This seems to be a very promising material. Very promising indeed. And that's pretty nice. But now let's try this material, which is new to us. We haven't tested it before. We've yet to try it. But we'd like to know what this glass-filled nylon is all about. Okay, let's install these and find out then. Stopping distance on glass-filled nylon friction pads. All right, we are ready to test the glass-filled nylon. Here we go. Let me just stop a couple of times to make sure the brakes work. And they do. Not bad at all. Terrific, let's get going then. 60, 70, 80. Come on, break. I barely made it. I'm on the very edge. Isn't that just... Well, it's only a tiny bit further. Yeah, I went off a little bit, but no big deal. So check this out, guys. The performance with these pads is, well... A bit worse. I guess this plastic is of a harder type and, uh, I mean... I don't quite know how to explain. The glass filler might be... These have obviously got different properties, but as you can see... Yeah, I've driven quite far away compared to the cone marking the stock pad stopping distance. Yeah, I'd say that's another 25 meters for sure. Yeah, these are some interesting results. Now let's go ahead and remove them. And uh, check the wear. Okay, guys, well, uh, I guess the cones paint the entire picture. We can see how the car stopped. It's about 40 meters on factory pads, 50 on Ultran. This time I went out of bounds, but at least I didn't stray too close to the potatoes on the glass-filled nylon. I barely even went off the pavement. As for the pet G, well, you can say that I didn't have any brakes at all. And where does this leave us then? Well, we got three types of plastics, all of them are obviously different, and they gave us different effects. The pet G, it would seem like it starts to melt real quick and early. When they got hot there wasn't any friction, and so they didn't perform as pads. The pads melted and the car just blew off the track. 
Now let's discuss the glass-filled nylon. It actually did a fairly decent job. It didn't leave any snot trails, but you can see that the wear on these was intense. I used these on the final run, and all of this tells us that they were also melting. But they were actually doing something, albeit they weren't super effective. Meanwhile, the carbon-reinforced nylon performed well once again. It brought the car to a stop, and though these weren't as good as uh, regular old brake pads, they were actually doing something. They were getting the car to slow down even. The car didn't even travel all that far. And it seems to be the most wear-resistant. I mean, the plastic didn't even wear down to the point of the pads. Granted, these pads are brand new, but something is always going to be off. Although the rotors are new, the calipers are old, the entire system is pretty old, so something is going to be out of whack. That being said, the plastics did wear down, though the glass fill didn't quite make full contact anyway. These two were effectively in full contact with the rotors, and the carbon-reinforced nylon did very well indeed. Wow, this material... We've tested it twice, first when we 3D printed those cam gears, and now we've done brake pads, which have performed very well. And I think we should try making something else. Hopefully you can shoot a few suggestions as to what in particular, and we'll of course also give it a bit of thought. But those are the results of our experiment. The carbon-reinforced nylon wins once again. This stuff is awesome. You saw it all for yourselves, that's all I got. Watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. And that does it for this video, catch you guys later.